Hi guys, this is Donnie with your Smart License Short. In this demo, I'm going to be showing you how to set up and register your Cisco Smart Software Manager on-prem license server. As a checklist, we've got a couple items we need to make sure we have. Number one, an installed up and running on-prem license server. You'll also need to think about a password, minimum 15 characters, at least one special upper lower and a number. Can be more. You can also choose to use the password that you'd use whenever you installed the server or you can choose a separate one for the user interface as opposed to shell access. The choice is up to yours and will be based largely on your InfoSec policy. In terms of languages, this demo we're going to use English but available also is French, Japanese, Chinese and Korean. You'll also need the host common name. For this demo, we're going to be using the IP address of the on-prem server, but if you have a DNS server configured, you might have a fully qualified domain name to use. One thing to note about IPv4, IPv6 dual stack is that you will need a fully qualified domain name so that you can use the same value on all of your products. You'll also need access to your Cisco Smart Account. Uh, specifically, you need access to a Cisco virtual account, which means that you either need to be a Smart Account Administrator or you need to be a, a virtual account administrator for the virtual account at Cisco that you plan to register your on-prem server to. So with that checklist complete, let's head on in to the demo. So I've got my browser up and going, so I'm going to go ahead and type in the IP address of my on-prem license server. Now one thing to note is you're going to want to go to port 8443 to reach the user interface. The standard port 443 is used by products for product registration. When you get here, the first thing you're going to see is this big warning potential security risk ahead. Uh, this is because when you do your installation, initially the on-prem license server is using a self-signed certificate which is inherently untrusted. You have the option to create your own certificate and install for the browser so that the browser can trust the SSM on-prem license server if you choose. For this demo, we're just going to go ahead and go to the advanced options. We're going to accept the risk and continue. The first thing I'm going to be presented with is the login screen uh, for the initial setup. Now, the initial login and password is not the password that you used during the installation. It's the user interface password which is available in your user guide. So we're going to go ahead and enter the information from the user guide. And the password, Cisco Admin, exclamation 2345. The first thing that you're going to see when you get logged in is a four-step setup process. The first thing you'll do is you'll check your language. Here is English. That's what we're going to use for the demo. The next thing you'll need to do is change the password from the factory default Cisco Admin Bank 2345 to something a bit more secure that you'll use in your environment. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a new password. And then we're going to enter it again just to make sure I typed it correctly. Alrighty, so at this point I've got my password entered and confirmed. I do need to note it. I suggest you store it in a secure space um, because you'll need it later. So let's go ahead and next. We're going to confirm our items. Now, the host common name, as I indicated earlier, I'm going to leave set to the IP address of the on-prem server. If you're using a domain um, name server, you would enter the FQDN, for example, my on-prem server at mycompany.com. Um, here, if you know, again, if you're using that for this demo, we're not going to use a DNS, so we're just going to leave it with the IP address. Verify my language selection, my password has been reset, and my common host name is the IP address of my server. We're going to apply this and then we're going to come back to the login screen. So my initial setup is now complete. I'm going to log in now with the admin user, but this time I'm going to use my new password that I just set. Again, it could be the same as your shell password you used during installation or it could be different. That choice is up to you. 
Once you're logged in, you're going to be presented with the licensing workspace. Here we have no accounts available so that um, I'm not able to reach the licensing workspace where I would obtain ID tokens for registering my products, nor am I able to add other members of my team uh, to my local account. Um, I could do a request here, and in the event that you have a company where you've got an ops team that runs your own from server, separate from your network team that registers and manages products, this might be a useful feature. For us, we're going to head on over to the admin workspace, which is up here in the top right. And we're going to land on the admin workspace desktop. There are a number of options available here from Access Manage for LDAP, our, our Active Directory, some security settings, ability to create additional local users, some additional system settings, the ability to enable and use APIs if, if you require that support, a support center for uh, logs, other information, network management settings, these would be your IP address, your interfaces, synchronization to trigger manual synchronization for your accounts and, or set up an automatic schedule. We're going to head into the accounts because we want to get registered with Cisco. As you can see, I have no accounts at this point, so the first thing I'm going to do is click New Account. Here, strongly recommend that your account name map your Cisco virtual account. So I have a, a virtual account at Cisco called Demo. I'm going to go ahead and use that. And my Cisco smart account that I'm going to use is Cisco Live. The other thing I'm going to choose is the virtual account. Again, best practice, it's really easy to remember if your local account name is Demo and your Cisco virtual account Demo, you kind of know those two to go together. You're not required to make them the same, and for some of our military partners, in fact, they will not be the same because they're not going to share that information with Cisco. They want to have some level of private information. But for us, we're just going to go ahead and choose our Demo account. Email, this is really a local indication of who created this account. We don't use this email. It's not sent to Cisco. It is strictly for you later when you, if in the event you have multiple accounts and you want to know who created them, who did it. So I'm going to go ahead and put my Cisco uh, email address here. We've now successfully created the initial setup. We now need to go in and link it to Cisco. To do this, we're going to head over to the Account Request tab, and we're going to see the account that I just did the initial creation for. Under Actions, I can approve this. I could reject this, or I could choose to do a manual file-based registration and synchronization. Which method you choose is entirely up to you. For this demo, we're going to go ahead and do the network registration. Here I need to enter my Cisco credentials. Now this is my Cisco CCO ID and my Cisco CCO ID password. So let's just go ahead and select that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in the password. And then I'm going to submit. If the information is not correct, you will get a password failure. A couple of things about this screen. My demo account name is demo. I've got my Cisco Live here, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have it. And then under the demo, I have my demo down here. Now, I could change it. For example, if I wanted to change booth and demos, for example, I could enter an entirely new value at this point. So, for example, if I'm running in a split operations team and a network team requested an account name that I didn't like, I could change it. The color black means that it is available and usable. If it was colored red, it would mean that it is not usable. Maybe it's already been associated with an on-prem server or you've got a product registered to it. And the color blue means it's brand new and then you will create the virtual account as part of the registration process. Uh, generally, creating the virtual account from here is by far the least uh, amount of effort and it's the easiest to do. You can create the virtual account at Cisco as I did and link it here, that is an option, but simply choosing it here is also an option. Once I do this, I'm going to go ahead and click Next, and now it is reaching out to Cisco and making an association between the local account that I've just created here on the on-prem and Cisco, and you see my account creation was successful. If I head over to the accounts, I now see my account. The other thing in the synchronization, you'll see that we kicked off an automatic synchronization. Any license that you have in your Cisco virtual account will be brought down and shown in your local account here on your on-prem server. So while that's running, we're going to go ahead and go back to the licensing workspace, which is here, and we're going to refresh the page. You notice 
the you don't have an account alert is now gone, the smart licensing tab is now available, as is the manage account. Now one thing you can do in the manage account is you can create more subfolders on the on-prem if you want. These are not shared with Cisco, but you do have the option to create initial, uh, additional local new virtual accounts if you like. Uh, we're going to go into the licensing portal. This is where the interesting stuff for teams that register and manage products. In the inventory, we have the ability to create a token. We can see our license. Here's the license I synchronized down from Cisco. If I have products registered, I would see them as well. So let's head on back over to the general tab and let's create a token. Tokens are only needed when you register the product. They're not used by the product afterwards. You can create tokens that will live up to 999 days. That's a little over 27 years if you want to put them in your orchestration scripts. I do recommend that tokens at Cisco be kept very, very short. On the on-prem, you can create them as long as you like because the on-prem server is within your company and within your firewalls and you've got better control of your tokens. Tokens are basically a virtual account ID. They can be used by any product, any product family, and any software feature. So I'm going to go ahead and create one default 30 days. Now as long as I've got one that is available, that has not expired, and has not been um, eliminated through the revoke option, I can use this token on any product I want to. I really only need one token, but if you want to create more than one token, you're perfectly capable of doing that. To use it, I would go to my product, I would configure the destination URL. This link right here is going to be the value that you will use for the destination URL on the product. If I click on this, it'll pop up. Here's my host common name, which I chose as my IP address, and here's the full. So I can copy this value, put it in my orchestration, or paste it into the destination URL on the product. And then when I do my register ID token, I can copy this token, and I can use it to complete the registration. And since this is the virtual account identifier, my products will show up in this product instance tab in this local virtual account in this local account. If I've registered multiple local accounts to multiple Cisco virtual accounts, this drop down will have more in the list, and I do have a little information tab here. With that, I've registered my on-prem license server, and I am now ready to register products to this server and exchange that information with Cisco in the form of a scheduled synchronization. I do appreciate your time watching this video, and uh, at all times, if you've got questions, reach out to me, and I do appreciate it. Thank you.